The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 102. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today we have Sue Urschler, author of Conquering the Seven Summits of Sales. From Everest to Every Business, Achieving Peak Performance. Welcome, Sue, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Thank you, Wade. Will you take just a moment to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally? You bet. Um, Again, my name is Susan Urschler, and I was a business corporate executive for over two decades and also a mountain climber for over two decades, and an author and a public speaker. And now I'm an entrepreneur. Excellent. Thank you for sharing all that. Now, let's jump right into your book, Conquering the Seven Summits of Sales, which was actually just made available not too long ago, uh, October 7th, 2014. Mm -hmm. And Sue, we're going to move quickly, but we're here to cover the top questions that our listener slash future reader want to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Conquering the Seven Summits? Conquering the Seven Summits of Sales, um, because when I, let me talk just real quickly about the climbing. Um, While I was advancing my career and climbing the corporate ladder, we were climbing the seven summits, the highest mountain on each one of the seven continents. It's amazing the skill sets that are parallel between climbing the (laughs) the sales ladder and then also climbing the seven summits. So the reason I wrote the book was because I want to help others. We achieved these objectives, and now I'd like to help others um, reach success in their business and their personal life. Excellent. What would you say? That we talk about it all the time. There's so many books that come out every single month on entrepreneurship or sales, but what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, and there's a lot of great books out there, and I think from reading all the ones that we've read, a couple of things. One is they're based on research which a lot of times is great, and but then also a lot of times on theory. This book is based on real-life experiences and the strategies that we learned and the skill sets from actually working in the corporate Fortune 500 world for a couple of decades and then also climbing the seven summits. So they're true skills, and we just share what worked and what didn't as well. So how would you suggest the reader engage with this with your book? Is this one that they can jump in and out based on what they currently need? Or should they really start from the beginning and read all the way through? I would start in the beginning and read all the way through. However, at the end of each chapter, each one of the lessons are summarized. So you can quickly look at that and, you know, and apply that. There are only seven chapters. That's because we've, we've uh, associated this with conquering the seven summits of sales. And also the subtitle is from Everest to every business achieving peak performance. Excellent. So Sue, we're my, we're to my favorite part of the entire interview, where I want to hand over the mic and allow you to take the next five to 10 minutes and really break down your book and, and help us understand what it's all about. Uh, will you do that for our audience? You bet. Absolutely. Well, uh, so diving into it, what I do want to start with, because we have three phases that are actually in the book, and it's called project, prepare, and persevere. And then within those phases, there's the seven summits that we need to conquer to achieve peak performance or drive our business or grow our business. And I'll go into those in a minute. To go back to the project, prepare, persevere, the project is we've got to project our future having a very clear vision of where we're going, a very clearly articulated vision. And of course, we've got to project our future and we have teams, we have to project the future of our team. That second phase is prepare. Uh, No big mountain is scaled in a single climb. We all know that. There's no way we could climb Everest in uh, in one day. It took us two months. No big business objectives are achieved in a single day either. We've got to create that detailed roadmap, stepping away from the business that delineates every step of our journey, and it includes metrics to measure success along the way so we keep ourselves accountable. And then that third phase is to persevere, and probably the most difficult. 
all great achievements are realized by committing to the goal and then just working relentlessly to attain it. We get knocked down so many times when we go after big mountains, big dreams, of course, big business dreams. Someone tells us no, something tells us no. Um, A lot of times when customers tell us no, they don't necessarily mean no, of course. They just don't understand our value proposition. They don't understand how we're going to make them successful. So we just need to go back, change what we're doing. Uh, On Everest, we climbed it in, it took 50 some days, 63 days, I'm sorry. And we turned around on day 63, the first time because my husband's eyes froze over. We were in a major storm. We had to come all the way back down. Couldn't go back up. It's the end of the season. So we had to just regroup, refocus, go back and do it again the next year. Very true in business. So those are the three phases. And then within those, there's seven chapters. And I'll just run through those real quick. The first one is commit to the summit. It's so critical that we have a vision and that we're committed to the vision. And then the second one, and, and, you know, I can share all kinds of things with that, but one is to have that, of course, written down. Because when we have our very clear vision, and especially for our team and our organization, then it just drives the right activity. And especially if we have that all mapped out for our team and our organization, it'll just drive the right activity. And then the second one is to travel light. And that is so critical in in business and in climbing. Today in this world, of course, we are all overloaded with so much coming at us, with with changing environments, with constantly changing industry trends, of course, with trying to do more with less a lot of times, and, and just so much new technology. And we only have 24 hours in a day, and we're trying to have a life. So we have a whole chapter on traveling light and how to make sure that we keep that vision in front of us and that we every day are focused on the vision. And those are the activities that we're going to work on as opposed to disruptive things like constant email, even though email is so important, but we have to make sure that we're focused on the vision and work on those activities throughout the day. Um, The third one is plan the route. And that is really more in depth, but just again, on a high level, it's putting a plan together and that's what top performers do. And in our plan section, it's the who, what, where, and how. With whom are we going to work? Who are those targeted markets out there? And the vertical markets that we're going to pursue, perhaps it depends on what our business is, but the decision makers, the influencers, all of that. So this isn't written out in a plan because we've stepped away from the business. What do they have today? And what are their needs by listening, listening to them? Where are we going to take them with our solution and how we're going to go out there and educate them on on the solution and what's going to make them successful? Like we always say, we make our customers successful. That's the next chapter (laughs) for guide your customers to success. We'll be successful. And also, I want to share with you, too, the last decade I've worked with so many top leaders throughout the country, and I'm going to say throughout the world, and we've also shared what so many of them share with us. But again, if we guide our customers to success, we'll be successful. And then uh, building your rope team, your Sherpa team, excuse me, that's chapter number five. That's so critical. Everybody knows that teamwork is so critical. So we have two sections in that. One is building our internal team because we've got to reach out across organizations. There's silos in so many organizations today, but to collaborate, whether we're in sales or not, but we just need to collaborate throughout the entire organization, share what we're working on. People will a lot of times help us if they know us and they like us and they understand what we're working on and then they'll be part of the project. On the outside rope team, We also, of course, need to build that outside network because we can't be an expert in everything. And the top leaders that I know and the top entrepreneurs, they always tell me they're not a they're not an expert in everything, but they build a very strong outside network where when they need to do something that they don't know how to do, they go into their network and they find the expert and those experts can just shave years off our learning curve. That um, sixth chapter is executing the route, and that has a lot of graphs and and um, and all kinds of of um, information in there that we can use to execute our route. 
but really it's also to be a lifelong learning learner to just completely all the time studying the route and educating ourselves because we've got to be able to educate customers on new industry trends on innovation so on and so forth and then the last one the big one is that persevere the persevere section and it's stand on top that's the last chapter and again i think that's the most difficult how many times are you willing to go back? How many times much hard work, time, and effort are you willing to put into it? And I want to share with you, too, is the dream big. Um, we stress this a lot because we're only going to get one opportunity. And all of us, our time is ticking away. Why don't we dream really big? Why don't we take our corporation the next level? Uh, why don't we do whatever we want personally and professionally and have that dream written down personally and professionally? And then, of course, map it all out and do all these things that we're talking about. Because, again, we're only going to get one opportunity. Um, Steve Jobs, the past CEO of Apple, he used to always say, our time is limited. Don't waste it. So those are the, those are the seven sections and chapters in the, in the book. So, so you just took us through uh, the phenomenal content that's within your book. And, and now we're asking you to take it even a step further in this next question. And that's now, you know, what's one principle or takeaway, one, one action item that you would recommend or that you would have the reader take away from your book? I would certainly say we need to break down. So I just mentioned going after the biggest dreams that we can go after, but how do you do that? And that's what so many people ask us. Mm. And it's like, we can't just go after it in one day. We've got to do it one step at a time. So we've got to break down these big objectives into manageable bite-sized pieces. Because what happens if we don't do that for our team and our organization? I can't tell you how many times I've been on a big climb where somebody has paid for the whole climb, paid to climb it. They get off the plane, they look at the mountain, they get back on the plane, they go home. And I understand. And and I've had issues with trying to go up Mount McKinley, Denali. That's tough. I'm five foot two and you got to carry everything. So we just have to break it down one step at a time. We're not going to climb it today. We're not going to, and I did not start out saying I'm going to climb Everest when I was 36 years old and I'd never climbed before, but I climbed Mount Rainier and that was tough. 14,000 feet. Then I climbed another mountain. Then I climbed Mount McKinley, kept going up and up higher and higher till a point was, yeah, I can get to Everest. But it took years of climbing the mountains one step at a time. That's huge. Yeah, that is huge. I love that concept. I, I think uh, <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to just go into the next question after you say something like that, because I would love to dive even deeper into that. But uh, it, it always brings you back to that example. They say, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one, one <laughs> bite at a time. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, that's what my husband said when we were on McKinley. <laughs> 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 that's true. <laughs> so, Sue, do you have a favorite quote from your book? I do. And I'm going to give this actually to my husband. And when I say my husband, Phil Urschler is an international mountain guide. He's guided for 40 years. He, he climbed Everest in 1984 and became the first American to climb the north side of Everest. So he's a very trusted guide. And we also mention that a lot in the book, that we've got to be trusted guides to our customers, to our colleagues, to our teams, all of that. But I, I'll use a quote that he's used a lot, and it's called, surround yourself with people who won't let you quit. Perfect. That's another one to think on. So we're going to actually post that in the show notes as well, so people can go back and actually look at that. So, Suda, we're, we're to the last question that we have. For you today, and and it's but it, but it's it, it's an important one as well, and that's that you've written a book that's going to impact lives. And what we're asking is, what's a book that you've read that created a paradigm shift or impacted your life greatly? And can you suggest that to our to our audience? I can, but this might sound a little different. And I'm going to say the Seven Summits, and it's by Dick Bass. Now, it is not about climbing in the business world, but it is about climbing the Seven Summits. And before I did it, I read that book. And Dick Bass is a good friend. He's over 80 now. But he was the first, first person to climb the seven summits. And he did an incredible – and he was a businessman. He owned um, the ski resort in, uh, um, in Utah, Salt Lake 
in Salt Lake. And so he owns Snowbird. I'm sorry about that, Snowbird. But anyway, he was a big uh, corporate person, and so was his partner, Frank Wells, who was the president of Disney. Those two businessmen went out to climb the seven summits. So by reading that book, it's very inspiring, and we can apply it to our to our business world. Excellent. We haven't had that uh, that one recommended just yet, so I appreciate that. And Sue, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listener to get more information on you and your book, Conquering the Seven Summits of Sales? Absolutely. Uh, good website for that. Our website is reachingnewheights.com. And also that book can be purchased anywhere um, on, you know, anywhere books are sold or amazon.com. It was published by HarperCollins. Perfect. Sue, again, thank you for coming on and sharing your book with us. Well, thank you, Wade, very much. If you want the opportunity to win this book or any of the books that we actually cover from day to day, uh, again, we are now giving a book per episode away. And so for today, we'll be drawing for for Sue's book, Conquering the Seven Submits of Sales. Uh, Again, just go to the elpodcast.com. Become a VIP up at the top right corner uh, for your chance to to start building your personal library. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.